Waterloo Bridge, the presence of the First Division's leading scorer scarcely raised a flicker of attention. Without the publicity of televised goals, one of the most successful recent signings from Scotland has arrived unseen by a mass audience. Mc... Um, McCavey... McAvenny. McAvenny. Are you a football fan, sir? To some extent, yes. Do you know this gentleman alongside me? Could you possibly put a, a name to the face? No. We know of McAvenny, obviously, West Ham and... Would it, would it surprise you to know that this is Frank McAvenny? You have got to be joking. <laughs> I've been uh, walking along through London here. Yes, I, yes. I wonder whether you recognise this gentleman alongside me here. Yes, I certainly do. Who, who is it then? Hugh McAvenny, sports writer. How <laughs> <laughs> dare you do this to this nice really? Thank you very See much you indeed. See you later. <laughs>
Christmas more than I did. <laughs> I saw it going off the rails. It all started when we had be a be 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 be. It's no good. You know I can't understand Morse code. <laughs> I just say, baby, baby, BBC Two. Give us 
Well, most of you, I'm sure, know the result, but the way it was reached will really live in the memory for a very long time. A Levine Duff promotion, Harry Carpenter is at the ringside as the bonfire night fireworks are about to go off. <laughs> laid flat and Kayla goes over and has a quiet word with Christie all is forgiven and Christie's manager Bert McCarthy actually comes across and kisses Kayla <laughs> truly amazing fight lived up to everything and there's no further animosity between the two men they've punched it out of each other Christie acknowledges defeat and Kayla accepts victory. No way.